like the Talia Vi bands coming out against 100 Thieves yeah. specifically, just because River and Quid have been so clean on that combo, and it was behind a lot of their wins. Yeah, you definitely target ban 100 Thieves top side if you're gonna ban anything. Meanwhile, energy's bans are all gonna go going towards, sorry, if you're 100 Thieves, you always ban out the ball lane, while if you're energy, you're always gonna ban top side gems. That's just how these teams play and how they win. Mm. And we've been seeing a lot of Smolder. I want to get your thoughts on Smolder. This is not Hotfix Smolder, so this is just the, the champ that's been tearing up uh, the leagues globally. And that's the 180 carry that has not been banned with Callista and Senna being banned. What's your thoughts on Smolder so far? Just getting your thoughts. I think it's very good for LCS at least. <laughs> yeah. I think that traditionally we've been in a very slow region and it's a region that it's very easy to play a champ that scale like Smolder. And it seems like it's too easy to get the 225 stacks before the game is lost. So I think it's it's pretty OP in this batch. Yeah, I mean, last game it happened in what, like 21 minutes, 22 yeah. minutes? <laughs> it's a very slow starter. You usually have like 60, 70, yeah, 10 minutes, but it, once you get the first the second upgrade, you start picking up stacks a lot faster, but you get like six per wave, mm -hmm. and it just gets out of control really quickly. Yeah, and we'll see if NRG end up regretting letting it through to 100 Thieves, because their first pick was Nautilus, which is interesting to me. Who he Nautilus special for sure. He's been spamming that. He won't be able to get the Giga Farm Nautilus that he gets when they do Senna Nautilus, but it's still, I mean, Team Liquid first picked this twice this week as well. So there's definitely a scrim pocket where just having Nautilus wins you a lot of games because of the engage, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's not like he got hard counter picked here going into the Alistair. So yeah. he's still a presence yeah. in lane. Yeah, like and then the, oh, you go for it. Yeah, thanks, man. I like the, the targeted CC from Nautilus and Smolder, but I think without having a premier lane AD carry like Callista or Senna, it makes it a lot less worth it to pick this. I think they're gonna go for maybe. That's FBI special, but I think that's not gonna be good enough to like win lane hard enough, given how hard they get out scale this game. So I'll be really happy with Hunt Thief's first three here if I was them. Wanted to get your thoughts on Nautilus first pick just in general, because we've seen uh, Team Liquid go to Nautilus first pick a lot, but in the LEC we've seen a little bit more Braum, just a little more counter picks into him. Yeah, I like it more if they get something like Senna. Following up, following up with Kalista, something reliable to win lane. I think Vars is still strong after he got nerfed, but he's not strong enough that they're gonna win lane so hard that Hunter Thieves can't just scale. I think that if I was Hunter Thieves here, I'd be really happy with this draft because Ooh. they simply aren't losing lane hard enough to justify how hard they outscale. Yeah. Um, how hard they get outscaled from an energy perspective. So we're very happy if I was Hunter Thieves here. Yeah, Olaf as well for Sniper, knowing yeah. the matchup, not wanting to get banned out. He's had. Such an exciting year, yes. I feel like. Yeah. He's a very hype rookie uh, this year. I think that he's not only like a very big personality as well, he's also yeah. a super good player and he's been having a very good rookie season so far. Most solo kills in the entire league yeah. in a rookie split is pretty hype. Compared to the other rookies in the league, like Meech and, and Masu, for example, he definitely have the most explosive entrance to the LCS. He's yeah. the most, how do you say it? You see him a lot in games. You don't mm -hmm. notice Meech as much, I would say, or like Masu as much, given how good their teams are. I but see. Sniper is very present in the games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing I also appreciate is obviously he, at the beginning of the season, said, like, oh, I want top lane to be a 1v1. Like, I just want to kind of like <laughs> kill my opponent. He had that other quote where he was like, I get. But like I, I love it when I see my opponent dead and I, I feel I like don't feel bad for them or something like that. Um, I appreciate that even though obviously he has made some mistakes in lane, he's made a, a few mistakes in team fights. I love that he always goes for the play, yeah. and that's why he's the solo kill leader right now. And also, yeah, that's why you want to see in rookie as well, like yeah. not having fear and like you want to see mechanics and like you want to see them just playing for the lane phase, go for the kills, this kind of mid, mid, uh, plays, and then make mistakes in mid game or like you know macro decisions. That's why I want to see from a rookie like him. So it's very impressive so far, but. Uh, these have accomplished with like this many rookies that they have. Yeah, I, think, I think we might actually have sound or a quote about Sniper. He popped off yesterday. He's actually been plotting his lane kingdom since <laughs> before the season plotting. started. My favorite change for the season 2024 would definitely have to be how isolated top lane is. Just because I'm a top laner who loves to fight. Like it's very hard for junglers to gank top lane. So it's like, it's just 1v1. So whoever kind of has like the advantage over the other top laner will get the get the edge of who plays like fights better or who, who just snowballs the game more. I love hearing that because that was a discussion <laughs> we had before the year that we haven't really shushed back on, but I, I, I want to call out, Bye, we have a Vagar? Yes, we have a Vagar pick. No, so Hunter Thieves is locked top two. They can still get first. It's blind pick as well. Yeah. It wasn't just like, I know they just or something. Just a straight black. He just wants to play it. Yeah. Quit I mean, styling. 
we've just been having a very good split, but I didn't think it was gonna pick something like this. Also, I think of like something not like this at all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Ari was banned, Karma was banned, Wei and Oriana was banned, but like, I don't know, maybe I see her. Ty was banned as well. I mean, there's a lot of chances. Azir is this disabled point. this week because of the ball. Yeah, the right. yeah right. true. So I guess control mage picks are a little bit wider, like a little more wide open. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's hard to pick at this point. And a question for you, now you're Varus, you're looking at this team, you naturally want to go towards like poke Varus versus Vagar, but now you have Olaf like and Alistar as frontline. You're still going to have to go the um, play to the Rune King build, right? I think you go poke this game. Unless like, Hanthi picks some sort of like fat tank in the jungle here, I think he goes poke because it fits well with uh, the quirky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's just, just a little bit better in lane. That's a fat tank. What's the jungler here that Hunter Thieves is going to close out with? Oh, Vi's already oh. gone. Other than that, a lot of stuff is open. Is this the River Jarvan return for the Varus? Probably not against Corky. It's, surely it's not Ramus. It's also not, right. not No. What? what? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. Thieves, Hunter Thieves. That's crazy. What are we doing, River? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I didn't get the memo that this game actually matters. <laughs> you still get first. We didn't get this. Energy gets playoffs with the win. Oh my god, what? River. Okay. What? <laughs> okay, well. that's it for the draft. Let's send it to the casters. Let's see what they got to say. All right, muchas gracias. Yes, yes. yes! <laughs> I've been waiting for this since 2017. Do you remember <laughs> Moon played Shaco? I was so excited. Moon finally played Shaco. We got a pro Shaco game in the LCS, and then they lost, and it looked terrible. And I was like, oh, God, we're never going to see Shaco again. He's finally back. River, I love you. Yes, yeah. Shaco. Okay, so I Just do want to get going, into Keep it. going, Kobe. I'm going to let you have this. I do want to get into it because there actually were Shaco buffs recently it wasn't on this patch but it was 14.3 where they increased the the box damage to jungle which is, is very very helpful um and i quickly <laughs> shout out the 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 shaco players that now big things with shaco the beginning of your clear a lot of times you want to protect the boxes because shaco has two options for double camp clears on red side if you put two boxes in the raptors uh this is one that i see a lot on on european west um, if you put two boxes in the Raptors and then you start on on red camp with your with your other box, then you can do red and the just the two boxes themselves will kill off all the small Raptors and the big Raptor will walk over to you while you're at red and then you can just smite it um, and so you don't have to pay attention to it at all and you can just finish up on the red. But it looks like River, upon getting invaded on this red side, is going to do the blue side start instead. Uh, the other option for red side, which is really good for solo queue, is uh, putting your boxes on the red and then on Krugs, because Krugs spawn later. Uh, and so you can do your red and then just hop over. Uh, I personally really like the Raptor one, because it gets your Raptors respawning quicker and uh, put, sets you up for a nice topside gank. Everybody's question mark things. Of course, this game actually does matter, like the desk was talking about, where if 100 Thieves win and FlyQuest have to lose, then this would be 100 Thieves' first place. So yep. let's take a look for it. He put all three boxes here on the blue because he got pushed out on red side. Didn't want to mess around with any of those. So you get your super quick uh, start to it uh, with the buffs to the boxes. Super nice. And he's already going for some river invade. Does get seen on the ward. He's going to deceive over the wall. It goes straight for the red buff. Contracts should know that that is what he's going for, but Contracts is still only level one. The only hope that he has is if he, maybe he can get in range and try to smite the red buff, but he has to be careful because he's still a level one Ivern. They're calling who he over. 753 HP. He tries to walk behind it. He gets the backstab. He claims the red buff. Does he deceive out of there? But he's got nowhere else to run. He's going to buy some time, but surely he will go down and River Shaco not off to the greatest to start. It's a first blood for energy. It's happening again. This is Moon all over again. No! I'm going to have to wait another seven years. <laughs> oh, honestly, though, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You know what? It's just one death. Brush it off. Double buff Nautilus. It went to the Nautilus. You know, whatever, dude. <laughs> Let's see it, River. Bounce back here. You still have your ignite. <laughs> Let's try and get a, a cheese kill to get back uh, back into it. <laughs> yeah. Now we do have our gank counter. This was from uh -huh. the last time Hundred Thieves met up against Energy. Yeah. River technically got two more ganks off of contracts. 
It's a little different with Shaco versus Ivern here, as both of these guys uh -huh. are be wanting to farm camps. But the question is, is River going to be playing more to invade rather than to gank lanes? Yes. <laughs> yes, he is. That is the question. That is the answer. Uh, he does find contracts after contracts has cleared out his full blue quadrant, though. So the job's already done there. Shields him off. No problems here for contracts. Energy, good job, you know, collapsing. They, they know River. They know River's going to try and do some of this uh, early invade stuff with the Shaco pick. And they had the ward here seeing the invade come. Nice little collapse there. So let's see what they can do for it. Honestly, the bottom side getting the kill, even though it did go into the hands of the Nautilus. I mean, that's your, that's your smolder lane down there, 400 Thieves. That's supposed to be like your late game insurance. They're like, okay. If our Shaco pick goes crazy and bad, you know, at least we'll be able to rely on, on a smolder later, right? <laughs> well, uh, as long as you don't feed too many kills True. into the energy bottom lane and make it even more difficult for the smolder to keep up stacks, uh, then yes, that will be the game plan. Hook on to Alum, but he should be fine just walking on out thanks to the Aftershock passive. Oh, this could actually get dicey here. Huhi is going to flash to guarantee the roof and the passive. Ayla punts FBI away, waiting to maybe flash. flash the arrow. Great timing, but another dredge line means that Ayla still goes down. River's going to be here to answer for the gank. Meech has already been chunked to 50% HP, and River now realizes that gank might not be successful. <laughs> uh, it's every passing second, we're getting less and less likely to see another Shaco in the LCS. <laughs> <laughs> the, the bottom lane, the bottom lane off of the extra kill. Now they got another one and Smolder's 50% HP under tower. You're going to get dove. I mean, FBI, does he just pull this off? He's already chunking Meech and forces him to stay under the tower. Cannot help River get invaded by contract. Yeah, at the very least, Meech does have flash, so he can outplay under tower. Nautilus doesn't have flash anymore because he used it to go after Alistar, so... At least Meech got to keep farming there and stays under tower and uh, get a couple of extra stacks. But yeah, let's see about the bounce back here. 400 Thieves. At least River was able to get... Oh, oh that was close. Does he look for the undertow? He pops the ghost. He wants to get in range. Flash, connect, sniper! This guy just does not miss when it comes to solo kills. Oh, he's got the ghost, so he just runs on in. Flash auto, gets the level up, finishes off the wave. Look at the wave dying to the tower. Wait a second. Contracts might catch him on the way out. His level six is here for Olaf. Ragnarok, can he survive the 1v2? But the Ignite taking down, and they're keeping their distance to make sure the sniper cannot maximize any chance for comeback, Contracts takes him out. Okay, so at least they get the trap kill there for energy on the way out. Sniper, even though he got his solo bolo, did use both of his summoner spells to do it. He decides to hold on to his ultimate here and not try and run out. He figured, eh, they probably have enough damage anyway, even if I use it. So he holds on to that for his lane. And it's it's gonna it's gonna be felt in the CS there, you know, because of the dive. Uh, Sniper moves on through and even though Dokla can immediately push it back. Looks like Sniper will get here pretty quickly. Loses two melees because of the roam from Huhi and, and dropping there, but not too bad for him. He'll be very happy still with that outcome. So let's do a quick status check. You already mentioned that if the Shaco pick does not pan out great in the early game, 100 Thieves are depending on kind of the late game aspect. The Smolder is the insurance. Yeah. I want to also say that Vagar will also be some insurance as well because he's going to be continuously stacking throughout the game. And even Whippo has mentioned that many people have perceived Olaf as this like early lane kind of dominant champion, but he has said, nah, like if you get two item power spikes, then this guy just literally runs through an entire team. So as long as 100 Thieves can withstand the early game, they should still be fine the later the game goes on. Yeah, it's pretty interesting because the Vagar and the Smolder that you're talking about, a lot of their late game scaling does a lot better in reverse than it does charging forward with an Olaf. So I'm very interested to see how this Olaf plays with the rest of the theme of, of the team because if, if you're charging into a team that is kiting back and has an Ivern, um, sometimes that can be super dangerous. Like you're saying, if you're fed though, and he did get his uh, solo kill, then maybe he is just so fed that it's dangerous for Ivern to even walk around him. Sure. And you just pop your ultimate. Running down an Ivern is one of the most satisfying things <laughs> uh, for Olaf players or any players otherwise. 
So definitely will be interesting to see, especially if, you know, River gets his Profane Hydra. Um, by the way, the Hell of Blades and, and Lethality build for Shaco is so fun for solo queue right now. Uh, Profane Hydra is in a very good spot for solo queue. And burst damage galore. If he's in there with an Olaf running someone down, you've got Ignite, you've got Hell of Blades, you've got Profane Hydra. They can just pop people and try and chain kills that way. Then, of course, late game, Vagar Cages plus Smolder and all the stacks on all the champions might be the recipe. But energy, critical for them. They got to keep focus in this game. They've got Dragon number one. They have a slight gold lead here, despite the top lane difference. And another reason why energy want to focus up in this game, not just for the sake of the game save, but because if they beat 100 Thieves, the uncertainty is over. They no longer have to worry or care whether Shopify wins their game against Cloud9 later today because energy will be locked into playoffs. There will still be tiebreaker scenarios for seeding, but if energy take this game, they're in playoffs. No more concerns. Sniper, does he look for another solo kit here? Dokla pops the Dominus. And that's going to be it from Sniper. He's going to hold on to the Ragnarok. All right, Ghost uh, traded out here. Definitely a very scary Olaf, scary summoner spell. And that's going to attract junglers, I would assume, because Dokla's just getting whittled down here. Oh, this, this is scary. Dokla, nice call of the Meek, empowered onto the minion wave, get some healing back. Gets the touch on Sniper as well there, so evens up the health bars, but River gets in here for the early vision. Ivern hover from contracts just out of vision, ready for any sort of aggressive play. They are expecting it, but again, the burst damage, if River gets in there with the Olaf, uh, brushes are, are used by Iverns. They're kind of spammed for vision because they give you really good vision. Yeah. Um, definitely one of the, the biggest tools there. So that's why we got the Ivern vision on the top brush. They were, they were thinking River was there. They check here as well. Uh, Contracts keeps on checking all these corners, oh. but 100 Thieves, four members top. I mean, Doko doesn't have dominance. This is four members committed to the dive. Contracts is trying to beeline back to his top laner to see if he can at least provide a shield, but they just completely demolished Dokla in the top lane. The Avengers have come to take down Dokla. No chance there. And with the Shaco ultimate also invested, I mean, I guess you can count it as five up there to make sure that they uh, they continue on with that one. <laughs> if we count that as a gank, holy moly, that is a that is a team gank right there. <laughs> they brought all the fans for Doko to sign. And but what's worse for Doko is that he just expended teleport to come back to the tower, and now he has to walk back. He lost to so many minions as now great hook by <laughs> Huhi and Meech! Meech yeah, is dead! It was so funny watching the mind games in real time. Meech was like, all right, I got this. You know, I'm gonna fake dodge the hook. And Huhi's like, okay, I guess I'll just throw it right at you then. <laughs> <laughs> and he nails him. Oh, okay. Well, Meech still has his flash uh, for the next fight. And they've got some extra gold for the kill. Things are starting off well for energy. They have diffused the Shaco pick for now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the the level two invade and the ward there is really the only thing that went super wrong for him. Obviously, you would love to be able to counter jungle, uh, jungle and Ivern. Um, you would love to be able to get an earlier kill with the Ignites. Uh, on solo queue, if, you're, if, if everyone's taking this into solo queue after this, then um, you do want to, um, you know, get one of those early kills off of your Ignite, but not too shabby. Once you get to your Profane Hydra, he's going to be a real threat. Howie. A lot of damage. Uh, River Force of Deceive just to make sure he didn't get executed by the arrow. We have the next dragon spawning in a minute's time here. A lot of damage. Primordial Burst is not going to be enough to take out Power Fox, but it does force him off the wave. Testing damage here, uh, damage thresholds. You gotta do that often as Vagar as the game goes out. It's like, do I kill here? Yeah, I mean, it's also, it's always worth pushing them out because yep. you, even if you don't get the kill, you get turret plate money, um, full access here. Slowly whittling away. They did get the three first grubs, so he's gonna get two for his troubles. Really nice play there from Quid, lands everything. He got the stun, gets the combo, unleashes ult, and ult guarantees him two of those turret plates and that scaling insurance plan that they have with the two stacking champions is right on schedule here. 74 stacks for Meech is definitely a little bit slower, but 
I guess Quid is like, don't worry, I got you. I'm also scaling. That's one, right. One of our two investment uh, in scaling plans will work out. And you know, it would be almost surprising, but because we've seen it so many times before, as Meech is forced to flash away from the package, as we were saying, it would, at this point, it would not be surprising if Quid finds a way to bail out 100 Thieves again in this game if it goes late, as he has done so many times throughout the spring split. Have to remind ourselves that in his debut summer split last year, so many people were wondering, does he belong in the LCS? Does he deserve another chance? 100 Thieves. <laughs> yeah, nobody wondering that anymore. Nope, Most, not anymore. Now people are wondering, do I put him first on my all pro? Does he get lane? MVP? <laughs> Probably do. Put he him is up making there. a damn strong case this split. As the dragons have been started up by 100 Thieves, boxes are set up. The flash from who he tries to connect onto Meat, but the fear from the box interrupts halfway through, and who he just might go down to Quinn. FBI forced to flash over the wall. Dragon's still at 3k HP. Sniper pops the Ragnarok. He runs down FBI. Palfox is gone as well. How does this happen every single time, Kobe? Beautiful uh, boxes bait right there. I got to say, L lining up the boxes by Dragon, and then who he hooks right in, uh, 100 Thieves just trap them at the dragon. Quid lays down the cage. I mean, you got such a nice early game from this Vagar. Quid is is rolling in the in the money right now. There it is. You get the hook in, box pops. He gets turned around on. You get the ultimate off and Quid executes him. Then Sniper from the other side. Olaf runs down the backside. River over the top with his uh, Q here from Shaco, lending the extra damage. And it just turns into a massacre. 100 thieves. Oh, guess what? Profane Hydra is also done. Nice. Maybe we get to see some uh, some highlights now from Shaco. Yeah. Some, uh, some real burst damage in action because FBI has no flash now. Palafox has no flash now. Those are the two guys you're looking to get your really big chunks on. And one thing I want to see River do is the way that Shaco passive works, for those that might not know, is you do more damage when you damage a champion when their back is turned towards you, called backstab. So if energy keep that in mind, assuming the fight is not chaotic enough, can energy remind themselves always face Shaco so that River doesn't get the empower damage as bodily and there's a dive and good God, Dokal is just gone again. Sniper and quit, baby. Linking up for the bottom tower. They get the free money as well. Meech trying to stack up in mid lane. Pretty easy little bit of a uh, juke here. They just played down to their bottom side that already won. Honestly, you just keep pushing bottom. Vagar, freest game ever. Five stacks on his Rod of Ages. Oh, this is scary contracts. Dokla just died on the bottom side of the map and the collapse from Quid could have made things dicey for them. Energy have to cede control of this entire bottom quadrant. River's gonna take it all. Yes, sir. Red buff taken away. Top side, they get the reset. So Sniper was sent up top side after they killed bottom. He's going to go answer the Corky push. You don't want to let the Corky scale either uh, too freely. And it looks like you know, 100 Thieves not too worried about that. One thing that could cause some problems, though, is if Corky did get super fed, got the Muramana transform. Uh, but Palfox would need a lot of gold for the poke to, to be a real hindrance to 100 Thieves. So looks like as long as they keep it in check then they should be okay. Meech now at 111 stacks, 16 and a half minutes into the game. And the Vagar is gonna be quite an issue here, especially with the free lane here. River yep. just keeps shadowing him. They go for Dokla again. River pops up from stealth and uh, ensures that Dokla cannot clean up those Krugs. Quid is just getting the auto attacks down onto this turret. Rest of energy might just try to cut off Quid. River already completed his back, but Quid is already making his way out of there. Should be safe. Next objective for the taking is going to be a Mountain Dragon, which will spawn in two minutes. So there's still some downtime before energy and 100 Thieves need to move to make those vision plans. And an easy play here from 100 Thieves. Ayla on the reset. Even though Ayla was seen uh, by the ward here through the river, doesn't matter. The goal is get Sniper that top tower gold. He gets it, finishes off another outer here. So 100 Thieves get to get a lot more area to play with on their side lane push, uh, push here. And now they can go back, clear out all those wards that were through the river and allow Ayla and River to poke around, threaten those possible flanks. All right, still a minute and 22. 
Gamers, I'm once again contractually obligated to inform you that playoff starts next week, so we'll be back on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's a lot of days. Just making sure that everyone at home knows. And this will not be the last time you hear of this, so I'll be saying a lot throughout the broadcast. All right, we got the Shrelias done for Quid as well on the Vagar with Ghost plus Flash plus Shrelias. This will be the fastest Vagar that you have ever seen. And I hope that's, oh no, he's got an Amptum. So he's not going for a third item, Deathcap. The only thing is like, because Deathcap multiplies your AP from your passive too, it is always such a massive uh, Vagar item. But yeah. honestly, Quid, you can do whatever you want, bro. Uh, I've got full faith in you. <laughs> Three kills for himself. His Rod of Ages is almost done stacking. Eight stacks here, so. Uh, very close to his bonus level from that as well. Yeah. And 100 Thieves, they have plenty of damage. So looks like a little bit of the utility there. Let's see if they can get any picks. Ayla and River here. Dokla, I feel so bad for him, man. He he literally was in urgent care heading into Super Week, had to power through it, still play for the team, and then every team is camping him and sending multiple people constantly to dive him, to pick him off in side lanes. Meanwhile, at least something here for energy. Their comeback plan, trying to get that money into Corky. Secondary towers are worth so much. Good job from Powell Foxy. Six around for the local gold. Oh, Rift Tail. Oh. Go, in, go in there, one more auto. He'll just finish it himself. Auto attack it. Boom. All right, he's got it. Dragon has spawned at this point in the game. Currently, 100 Thieves have taken up residence on that bottom half of the map. So it should be there as easily. Looks like River's going to be the only one dedicated to taking it down. Just going to pop the Hallucinate as well to make sure that between both of them, they have more than enough damage to take down the Dragon, while the rest of 100 Thieves are going to be fine on the map as Meech dodges a chain of corruptions from FBI. Okay, I guess now we're looking at Smolder Watch. Definitely a lot slower stacking this time around, but as we stated, isn't, isn't too much cause for concern. Um, as they have many other options for scaling here as well. Quid burst damage plus a Vagar ultimates is going to be, uh, or a uh, river burst damage plus quid burst damage is going to be kind of scary too. So anyone getting caught out um, definitely has a, a lot of pain to look forward to. Maybe contracts, shields will be enough to keep them upright. Uh, energy definitely are going to have to have this like huddle turtle defensive setup here with the team where nobody's, you know, out by themselves because you will get run down. There's a lot of uh, mobility in and pick potential here for 100 Thieves in addition to have kind of a scary team fight. So you can see energy, they slowly move up. They use these Ivern Brush for vision, just trying to keep some sort of ward placement for themselves so they have some options. We did at least for Pal Fox get that Muramana transformed. Spear of Sojin is done as well. Hmm. Oh, hook on the Ayla. Forced to immediately pop the ultimate. It's gonna be huge for the next fight if energy force one around this Baron. Contract stuck in the cage. The event horizon is gonna keep him locked in, but already popped Daisy to make sure he had a bodyguard there. Hundred Thieves can try to be patient with this one. Yeah, honestly, I'll start with that ultimate is definitely a liability. But because Hunter Thieves have so much control of the map right now, I think they'll be fine just keeping energy bottled up on energy's own side of the map. Uh, continue to starve them out a little bit. Red buff is up here, and since we're past the 20 minutes, it's actually a pretty decent objective. I, I love the new changes where you know, everybody on your team is going to be able to get one. Contracts has it already pre-channeled, though, so he should be able to go over there and snag it. At least get uh, energy some, some fighting chance here. There we go. Things are so tense here for energy. Reminder, 100 Thieves. The most that they could play for is first place, but it would have to depend on them winning as well as FlyQuest losing. His contracts is forced to flash, gets caught out by River and Quid, but who he is here for the collapse. Hallucinate already used by River. They try to flash right on top of Quid, but no one is there to follow up, and the Event Horizon is going to keep him stuck. And meanwhile, Sniper just completely took down Palbox in the mid lane. Another kill goes over to Quid. Energy are falling to pieces. 100 Thieves are tearing them apart. It's a massacre. 100 Thieves are rolling them over with Shaco Jungle. Quid gets flashed on again. But the Event Horizon keeps Doku from being in range, but FBI has necessary to finally take out the raid boss but 100 thieves know that contracts is gone and they are burning down the baron oh man 100 thieves are just having fun sniper here 
Ever since the beginning of the game, I mean, he was so confident. He went for the, the solo kill on Dokla under tower. Both summoner spells used. He got a really big lead for himself, and he never looked back. Uh, with the Hydra plus uh, the experimental hex plate as well, he used that to run down Palfox in mid lane. Now Palfox wants some revenge. Uh oh. Dokla, help! There's a giant Viking! He pops the Ragnarok! He looks to burn down Palfox! He gets one! Does he look for two? Who he's brought along for help with the Ragnarok? Oh Started moving up there. Sniper turns and fights. He's good for two. <laughs> what an incredible debut for Sniper this split as Quid is going to get locked up by FBI. The Primordial Burst does not do that much damage. FBI should be able to win this one. Dodges out on the W. The E finally takes him out. Energy are really fighting for their lives right now. 100 of these are having so much fun in the last game of their season, which does have implications for if they finish first. This is what I love to see from a first place team. They're truly loving League of Legends. And here is how he got the solo kill. Okay, it was a really good uh, brush advantage from Sniper, waiting in that little brush inside your jungle. Pal Fox was trying to rotate over to mid lane. Um, just really good little surprise play from him to get the first kill. Uh, and then we already saw like the beginnings of that team fight on bottom side that led to the other one. But the fun one <laughs> was the top lane play. All right. Not again. I've seen it. this. <laughs> Wait, oh, it's just, I thought you, this was live. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> I got baited. I was like, there's no way this is deja vu I, all over the game. I thought you were just like, oh, don't show it to me again because it was so brutal. But here we go, Baron. <laughs> oh, three man knockout from Ayla. Mom comes in from the top rope. Sniper finds the first one. Contract is not long for this world as well. The undertow doesn't find him, but he takes out Huey anyway. And the Baron should be theirs to claim. River burning it down, 2,000 HP. Contracts, can he get in? But he's being zoned off by River. The Deceive into the backstab. Dokla tries to fight off Sniper. They find one thanks to the help of Palafox. He Valkyries out, but I I don't know if Dokla can get out alive from the rest of 100 of these members. Meech is looking for the damage. Does he have to execute already? Flap Flap comes in. Not quite yet, but he doesn't need the execute. It's just enough damage to take out Dokla. Look at Quid. He's not even done. Quid's oh not even done. Oh, God. The event horizon. Where does it go? Oh, my God. It's just the primordial burst. Outplayed, sucker. <laughs> Take a victory lap, honestly. Take a victory lap. Summoner's Rift is theirs. 7.4-ish, the gold lead. Up to 8K now after the tower. Easy reset over to the dragon. All right, honestly, Cyclosword done, plus another Serrated Dirk. Shaco Jungle has not been the star of this game, Rafa, but Shaco Jungle will get a win in the LCS. I think that is important. Honestly, though, running over the fight, uh, we mentioned as soon as you get that Ravenous Hydra, Sniper has done so much work. Um, Ravenous Hydra did get a small buff, too, a couple patches ago, where they buff up the, the healing that you get from the active. 150% the lifesteal, uh, which was quite nice. So you always trying to play on the edge there. Uh, at least Energy do get the shutdown. They're going to show you a third time, buddy. Man, this is just cool. <laughs> You know, it actually is cool. Like, I don't think we've ever shown a, a re another replay of, of the same thing. Like, uh, I think we have a big sniper fan in the uh, production. <laughs> <laughs> is he gonna mew on him again? Okay, not quite. Oh, okay. ah, that's why he's cooking him. <laughs> that's, that's why they're showing it again. They really wanted to get the dances in. Sniper's been so fun to have in the LCS, uh, celebrating his wins, celebrating the victories. Now, Monka W, Olaf is right. You see him charge out of the bush, and you are just praying the Ragnarok runs out before he takes you out. 100 Thieves, I mean, this roster has just been such a pleasure to watch. I know we did not have high expectations for them, but they have continuously impressed and surprised everyone. There's a reason why they are finishing as the top two team in the league. And players are still tra talking trash about them. Did you see the interviews from both JoJo and Inspired? Yeah, they're still in, calling them frauds. In, Inspired said, I hope we get 100 Thieves in playoffs because they're a free win. Yeah. Uh, and JoJo was talking about them being overrated as well. But yeah. 100 Thieves keep on winning. Yeah. JoJo literally said, if I face 100 Thieves in playoffs, I'm celebrating early. <laughs> that That's big words. 
as we get River forcing Doko to pop the Dominus. River's gonna have to run away. Uh, he's not getting out of that one. So 5v4 for energy. Maybe they can hold the line, but two inhibitors have all fa already fallen from 100 Thieves. My mistake is only just one inhibitor, but they're making short work on the top side of the map. Sniper pressing the charge. Here comes Zayla. They find the knock on the contracts. He flashes out. Ignite taking down. Quinn and Meech still holding the line as well alongside Ayla. Who he goes in for the knockup, but Meech has the execution ready. Mom once again comes through. And they get the inhibitor. They're trying to walk it out now. Quid sub 50% HP. Looks like um, a bunch of these will make it out. The only thing that's really hurting my heart this game is that there's no death cap for uh, for Vagar. Uh, <laughs> he is going into tank items now too after the Leandries. Uh, probably a dead man's to yep. look for picks. I think it's Quid. Quid is like, you know what? I'm actually getting too much credit now. Before, it was not getting enough credit. Yeah. And now everybody's jumped on the train. He's like, you know what? I'm getting too much credit, so I'm going to get a bunch of speed and make picks for the rest of my team so that the other players can get more credit as well. What a team player, Quid. What a guy. What a guy. That's the homie play you're looking for. River here. He's the one that uh, we need to lift up, actually. So make some picks for him because... Uh, Shaco, we want Shaco to shine so you can like bait more people into playing it in pro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's got the, what is it, the Cyclosword? Heck yeah, Cyclosword plus your profane uh, and the extra serrated Dirk here. Only problem is contracts, this pesky Ivern is hovering around everyone. You know, these shields are so annoying, man. Let me just get a solo on on like Palfox or something. Yeah, River just wants to one-shot someone without any counterplay whatsoever, and Contracts is making that job very difficult. Also, the locked shield from Hui, the times of well will also prevent an assassination. But this bot inhibitor just might fall from 100 Thieves. Couple more auto attacks for the minions and the members, and that's that. All three inhibitors have been taken out, so double super minions will be pouring into the base. Yeah, they will. And all of 100 Thieves are going to be pouring into the base. You're going to get 200 Thieves here pretty soon. Sniper force to pop the Ragnarok to avoid the chain of corruption. Mom once again comes through the top. Sniper is able to evade danger here. River pops the clone from Hallucinate. Buy some time. They're waiting. Oh, Quinn forced to flash away from the dredge line. Great use of the Summoner spell there. Pops the Prevent Horizon, tries to buy space. They're playing around the boxes to see if energy get too close and get feared by one of these boxes here. Ayla gets engaged on who he forced to flash. The death charge connects on the quid, but he's able to distance himself well. Palafox still has the package available. He wants to look for a desperation. Hail Mary looks for Meech, but he's also forced to flash. A lot of summoner spells being burned by 100 Thieves, but no deaths. Hmm. All right. Let's start the story of an epic comeback. Oh, 100 boy. Thieves here. Hey, they're just going to crumble. They, they're getting too ahead of themselves, you know? They're, the, it's all going to their heads. The success oh is going to their heads. They're, uh, they're probably going to get Baron. Um, and then Dragon Soul is coming up really soon, too. So we're just going to get those as well to make the comeback even more epic for energy when they're able to do it. Does this story have a contract Baron? Not this Baron, nope. but next Baron, yes. Oh, next bear. Okay, can I? Yeah. Can I hedge you on that? <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> you know what, chat? Let's get your opinions. Does energy come back in this game? Yes or no? Just yeah. simple poll. Put your entire net worth on the game right now. Put the house and the second mortgage on energy to come back. Otherwise, I don't believe you. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just troll voting. <laughs> just a reminder at home: we are not responsible for your financial decisions. All right, 100 Thieves, they're coming to end it. Pick up your Dragon Soul on the way in, Mountain Drake. But they don't see the big turn coming inside the base. The energy team fight. They're lying in wait. Level 16 for Palafox. Oh, four item power spike, level 16, Corky. Now four items as well for FBI on the yeah. Ferris. Don't mind that there's a level 18 Vagar on the other team and an 18 uh, Olaf as well. Or the fact that they just got Mountain Soul. That's yeah. fine. It's fine. All good. All right, here we go. 100 Thieves with the super minions in each lane. Make one last push. Chain of Corruption right onto Ayla. He gets stunned up. Doesn't even pop the ultimate because he doesn't care. Takes a lot of poke from FBI in the back end of it. Dredge line does not connect on the Quid. But the movement speed, Ayla forced the engage. The first Nexus Tower falls. Bomb from the top rope once again. The execution and start coming in. The first one goes on to who he. Toklas forced back. Palafox and FBI keeping their distance. They burn down the second Nexus Tower. Hundred thieves will strip fit away, fade away from Energy's hands as they look to try and fight for first seed against FlyQuest. All smiles 
there. 100 Thieves were having fun in that one. Just playing some League of Legends with your friends on stage with a huge crowd, everybody watching. Styling on them, Sniper. I got to live the Olaf dream, running through multiple players. Not exactly the Shaco dream, but it, he was in there. You know, <laughs> when historians look back on this game, Kobe, <laughs> will they tell the story of a successful Shaco pick? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look at the Crocs, too. <laughs> Everybody in Crocs. Didn't them. they, like, get fined for wearing Crocs or something? Is that... I, is, this, is that a croc pro 